and everybody just like gives me the deer in the headlight look, like they blink. Um, we know it's a, a multipolar neuron, okay, because it's got multiple poles, okay, multiple of these processes coming off, okay. Uh, we also have bipolar neurons, so they will only have one dendrite and one axon, and we have unipolar neurons that are going to have the dendrite and the axon just coming off of one pole, and that's why it's called unipolar. So they will always have one axon, okay? But you can have zero, one, or many of these other structures which are called the dendrites. So dendrite, axon, which is this that's running in the middle, okay? All of this part then where we have the nucleus, where we have all the, all the cellular organelles, all this potty part, this potty, this part is called the, the body, okay, of the, um, of the neuron, a synonym with the soma or the perikaryon. So coming off of this soma is how we're going to categorize it then into unipolar, bipolar, or multipolar. How many are coming off of these processes? So when we look at the model itself, if we look at what's here inside of this, um, uh, why isn't that labeled here? It's the cell body. All right, inside the cell body or the soma, we're going to have a typical cellular structure where we're going to have a nucleus. Those little raspberries inside are the nucleoli. We have a Golgi apparatus. We've got a smooth ER, okay? We're gonna have mitochondria. Now, some of the specialized structures that we're gonna have in a neuron that are different, that we're, I mean, they're not different, but they're more specialized that we're gonna have in here than any other cell, is we're going to have a very complex cytoskeleton. So these black lines that are on this model here, those are the neurofibrils or the cytoskeletal elements. And we have to have like girders inside the cell that'll hold up these processes sticking out. So that's what those black lines are. So since it's got such a complex cytoskeleton, it's gonna like compartmentalize the rough ER. It's got abundant rough ER because it's a very highly metabolic act, metabolically active cell. So it's got a lot of chemical reactions. It needs lots of proteins. Those proteins were made in the rough ER so that when we look at it histologically, we get like this splotchy pattern. So the rough ER is compartmentalized into these things that we call the nicel bodies. So you can either call these, if I put the sticker here, you can either call this a nicel body or you can call it the rough ER. Call it both and you've got extra credit. So these are then the structures that we're going to have, um, uh, the soma. So of these dendrites, many are going to be coming off, but we always have just one axon. The axon is going to start off in a widened area off of the body. This is called the axon hillock. And we're going to have, now I know this is in the peripheral nervous system, and that's why it was a multipolar motor neuron, because I'm going to see these individual, so all of this is the myelin sheath, and how it's been myelinated is with individual Schwann cells. So it is a multipolar motor neuron. So all of this here is one Schwann cell that's wrapped itself a lot of times around this axon, okay, to form this insulated layer of many multiple layers of plasma membrane that has lots of lipids and proteins, okay? So this is this axon hillock, and the first portion of the axon before the first Schwann cell is called the initial segment. So all this, the axon hillock and the initial segment are gonna make the trigger zone. And this is gonna be the important area where an action potential begins, okay? So we'll talk about that when we talk about the physiology today in the lecture. So we've got the axon hillock, the initial segment, okay? And I think of the cell body, that's everything that we need to name there. When it comes down to the axon itself, the axon is gonna be a single, very, very long process, okay? In these types of, um, multipolar motor neurons, okay? Multiple Schwann cells. The gap between one Schwann cell and the next, so right there, that's called the node of Ranvier. This, all this layer is going to be the myelin sheath. On the inside, we've got all the cytoplasm because it's part of the cell that's going down the axon and the outer plasma membrane of the axon gets a special name. It's called the axolemma. So now this Schwann cell is going to wrap itself multiple times and it's going to like squeeze out the cytoplasm so that we only have the nucleus and the nucleolus, these things here, of the Schwann cell in that periphery, in that outer layer. So this outer layer also gets a special name. This is called the neurolemma. Okay? So I've got axolemma and neurolemma. Now outside of the entire axon, we're also going to have in the peripheral nervous system associated connective tissue that's going to go just like the muscle, where the outer layer is called the endoneurium, so this outer here is the endoneurium. So to repeat it just to be kind of nauseatingly repetitive, axolemma, neurolemma, endoneurium. So now you're going to take several of these axons, right, that are bundled with an endoneurium, put bun bundle those together in a fascicle that's going to be held together with another connective tissue called a perineurium take several fascicles together hold that nerve fiber together 
with the epineurium. So if you label it, how would you label those three? I can't peri and epi. I have those on the slides okay. of the one that says medullated nerve. There okay, I so will ask you the only one you would do is the outside. I can only do one, the right? endo. Okay. So I can only do the endoneurium, the neurolemma, the axolemma. And I will for sure have it on one of those because okay. students get the names confused. I have a question. Neurolemma. Neurolemma. Is, is the also partial of the this it's oh, part of the myelin sheath, myelin yes. Sheath. It's the outer layer of the myelin sheath. Yes, it is. So if, you, if I put the sticker here and you put myelin sheath, you get partial credit because, yes, it is It is a myelin sheath, but more specifically, this has this layer has a name and it's called the neurolemma. So that's how you would, that's how you I ask. put the sticker, yeah. What do you would so, what is the layer? No, I'll have a paper in front of the model and it will say name the structures. So if you have a sticker here and you put Schwann cell, you're right, it is a Schwann cell. Right? But it's only partially credit. It's like the femur. You know, if you knew it was a femur, that's fine. It is a femur. But, but I fine. wanted the greater trochanter, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, you're right. But it's not the fullest thing. So, again, that's neurolemmas right there. The axolemmas right there. So here, if you tell me it's the axon, yeah, you're right. It is the axon. Partial credit. But this layer gets a specific name called the axolemma. Okay? The last thing, so I'll just put the structures here. So the last thing, so when this axon ends somewhere very far away, again, if I had to have a model to scale, it would have to go outside of the room. That's how long this is. At the end, it's going to branch. And those are called the axon terminals. Mm -hmm. Each axon terminal is gonna end with a widened knob, which are these. So these rubbery things that we have here are actually the axon terminals of another nerve that's going to synapse or communicate with this nerve. Okay, so if I put a sticker on here, this widened knob at the bottom is called the, the axon terminal. Uh, yes, the whole thing is the axon terminal, but that's the synaptic knob, synaptic button, synaptic bouton, whatever you want to call it, okay? So that's what these are, and sometimes I do do that. When I ask you to name the structure, I'll put it here or here, and there's a difference. This is what's at the end of that, right? And this is a dendrite, and that's an axon terminal. Oh, so the... The rubbery things are from, you see this, this is, the model supposed to be pretending this is another yeah. neuron that's coming and synapsing or communicating with this with other neuron. So the beige looking structures These pointing out are things. the dendrites. No, the no, white, these Yeah, things. that's what I mean. No, oh, okay, you I'm, call that beige, I'm, I'm thinking sorry, those sweetie. are orange, the one, the rubbery ones are These orange. These are going to be then Okay, so terminals. the white, beige, whatever, and, and, and are dendrites. And, as, okay. and as much, this one's been cut for you, so you can see the little dots in there. Those dots in there so are going to be synaptic vesicles, exactly. Okay. 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 Now, the fast. other types of question that you can encounter with these is not only what type of structure, you'll have another that will say, what, what is this a model of to begin with? And then another one that will ask you, what are the synapse? What synapse am I locating? So when I have an axon, and again, 90% of the time, a, a neuron is going to com communicate to another neuron. Even though the, place, the first place we saw it and we learned it in class was the neuromuscular junction, so that means between this and a muscle cell, really the majority of the time it will be between two neurons, at least two. So here, we, where, where they come together, we call the synapse because there's a space. There's, I'm going to talk about that today in lecture, the synaptic cleft and all of those properties that you learned at the neuromuscular junction. But here, the way we can have then is the axon, because this was an axon terminal, can, can synapse with a dendrite. And that is the majority of the time how it's going to communicate. So it's an axodendritic synapse. So on the paper that says, name the synapse, and I put the sticker here, don't tell me this is the axon terminal, because hmm. that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking what it's type synapse. of synapse am I here, okay? So if it's between, I'm sorry, between this axon and this axon, it's an uh, axo, axo dendritic. I said axon, it's a dendrite. Axo between this axon and a dendrite, synapse. axodendritic synapse, okay? That is gonna be the majority of the time. Sometimes the axon's gonna come and synapse with the cell body, so it's axosomatic syn synapse. And we only have one example here of an axoaxonic, because it is the rarest form. So between an axon terminal and an axon hillock, it's called axoaxonic. Okay. The, on the book, they say even though this swan cell inside, they have all this. This is this in here is not swan cell. This in here is cytoplasm that's in continuation with all of the cytoplasm of the cell. At so can I say that it can be axon? This is the axon. This is okay, the cytoplasm so of the axon. So inside the axon, Called they the also, axoplasm. they still have this... Um, no, there is no rough ER down there. It can't fit. So the most you'll have are mitochondria, 
an occasional ribosome, the vesicles that are moving down and back and forth. Um, uh, but small things can only fit in this small diameter. A rough ER, no. So this is one of the problems, and that's why we talked about anterograde and retrograde transport, because the proteins and everything that needs a membrane, plasma membrane, for example, where is that being made? That's being made in the smoothie artisan here. So now you have to get that down to the end somehow. So it does have a system of transport where you're gonna have those. And I don't know if you remember from 2A, I showed that, that video of the living cell where we saw like a molecule.